Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Place Factorio Angel Bobs. Since I launched the rocket in the last episode, I thought it'd be quite nice to have a bit of a base tour of, in this one. I'll run through a bit of a, a sort of a summary of what I've done over the uh, last 200 and something hours of, of play. Um, so as you can see here, the um, the base has expanded out and got quite big over the time I've been playing. So, but I'm gonna, but it all started over here in this sort of area. So I spawned in. Let's see where was it? It was somewhere. It was somewhere around here. Yeah, where all the um, all these all these steam engines are. So I started here, and there was, as you can see, there was a few ore patches around here. So this is where I started off digging stuff up and um, getting going. So there's a sapphire and the bobmonium around here. Um, more sapphire there, and then some stereotite over here. And I think there was a oh yeah, and there's a patch of coal up here with a tiny little bit of rubite, and you can see there's 90 of it left. So I've got through quite a lot of that over in the time I've been here. So I started off in this area. I built up a sort of the normal, the normal sort of handful of miners using the burner, um, burner, burner miners and the um, crushers and so on, as, as you sort of to do to get a basic start going. And then as I started to have a few resources available, I started to build a bus going down this way. And you can see, still see the remains of it. Actually, it's the, these belts that come down, come down here, and then down here. And if I zoom, and if I zoom out a bit, you can you can see a bit more of it. As it, as it sort of starts starts up here, and, it, and then it wiggles round like this as it comes down here. And all these wiggles and bends in it are because at this point I didn't have any of the uh, cliff explosives to get round these um, these cliff edges. And there's stuff, and there was stuff built up all all over it on both sides. We had a load of some smelting arrays up here. We had, oh yeah, we had this is the, the first stereotype, and we had a crushing and and smelting happening just down below it as well. And that worked its way down uh, down here, and, and of course the, uh, the the bus expanded and expanded as as buses tend to. And I think at one point I had yeah I had loads of construction going on across here and building up all of the different um, different machines to do all the different pro types of processing. I had various different ore processing going on over here, and then over time I gradually stripped those out and replaced them with stations that were just dropping dropping the um, the finished articles in. So originally there'd be perhaps, um, yeah, there was this Jeevalite mine up here that is still running and there's, there's still even a little bit. There's 131,000 left here um, and this is now mostly being used for copper and, and steel to make ammunition. So that's that's really all it's being used for now. But at one point this seemed to be the new exciting thing. I thought maybe this is where it was where my iron was going to come from for the future, but it didn't really last. We also had a steel processing facility in about here, I think it was. So yeah, as you can see, we've got the iron and the steel, we've got the various circuits and things coming in. Those were another thing that were built up here for quite a long time. Then we had red circuits being built in here. We've got, um, this looks like plumbing going on here. So so as you can see, I, I, I had quite a lot of different things going on in here. I forget what was in this area. And then it expanded downwards and downwards and we had things like red circuits being built here. And in fact, they technically they still are, they're just not really going anywhere. Um, and then we have blue science being built here, but I've ripped that out. And eventually I got to the point where I got to about here and I thought, well, I don't really have any anywhere else to go. I don't have landfill available in the sort of quantities I need to push across this this river. And there were lots of biters on the other side. And by this time, I'd started to sort of push out this way a little bit. So we then started, I started building up, um, I'm not sure which I did first. It might, it was probably this, um, this iron production facility here because I was producing iron the, the very very simple way where you just crush the stereotype chuck it in furnaces and it produces iron and to be honest that was working and it was quite straightforward but I think that was kicking out a lot of pollution and that's why I was having some of the problems with biters that I was during the process so I then moved on to this system here where you process the um, iron through about a bajillion different steps as you go through and then it produces I think it's about two or three times as much iron for the amount of ore you're putting in so it's not an absolutely enormous increase but it does mean that you've got things like um, ingots in case you need them later and, and so on so it gives you a bit more future proofing and then of course that was being dumped out to a train and we're pulling that off to various other places by train another big step that we had was the uh, this massive um, oil well no gas processing facility so we've got this train here bringing in the gas um, into the tanks running it through one, two three four five six seven eight nine different processes this was my first sort of re big angel bobs headache the angel petrochem trying to turn um, gas into plastic you run through these nine different processes you burn off so many different interme different intermediary products it's it's enormously wasteful, but it did cause a little a little dribble of plastic coming out at the other end. 
since then I've improved things a bit and as you can see I've got 92,000 plastic in there now most of that's probably going to um, low density structures um, but at the point that was the best recipe I had available later on I started doing things like using these different metal ores and breaking down oh I don't I don't even know anymore but there's another sort of another few step process here and I also worked out that with, the, with the, if I need more plastic, with the um, processing I'm doing for the rocket fuel, there's some hydrogen being made out from, from there, and I can combine that with, was it carbon dioxide perhaps? There's something in there anyway that would allow me to essentially turn hydrogen into plastic without too many other intermediaries. And this also produced um, sulfur as well, so I had that, I was, I was exporting sulfur at one point from this process. Um, and then I realized I needed more sulfur because I was getting through a lot of sulfuric acid. So I started this process up to make more sulfur. And then it flipped over and I had lots of my processes. I think it was a lot of the um, the ore refining processes were producing more sulfuric acid than I knew what to do with. So it's it's been, a lot of this has been a long, difficult process of trying to keep things balanced. Oh, and I remember trying to free up this area. That was when I was really having trouble expanding out in, militarily because I had the... Um, the normal turrets and the sniper turrets and I had a machine gun on a car and that was it and against whatever level of biter I had at that point I just I just couldn't cope uh, eventually I discovered the plasma turrets and I was building them around here for a while that's why and that and it because because that, why was I doing it down here did it require sulfur maybe I can't remember but for some reason I was building the um, plasma turrets down here and I've since moved them off over here and I now need to move them again off onto the other, onto the new bus, so I can dismantle this one a bit more again. But you know, um, uh, baby steps, a little bit at a time. And I've expanded out here now. I've got oil processing as well that's producing this lube, and various different ways of producing these um, solid fuel types. And these are all very, very backed up, but it doesn't seem to have caused a problem yet. You've got lots and lots of lubricant here, so I think we're basically okay. I'll come back and worry about this if, if and when it becomes a problem <laughs> the next thing I did well well I, I put I put in this um a cop basically a copy of the facility that was making the iron ore in order to make copper and this is now yeah there's a decent amount in here it seems to be dribbling through sufficiently quickly um, <clears throat> I do notice that a lot of this has gone to sleep rather than filling that up and I think that's because I wanted it to be able to use up the overflow that was coming out from having this copper ore that's coming out from my, from the next thing I'm going to talk about but this this worked pretty well it was capable of producing copper as fast as I needed it then oh dear then <laughs> I decided that um, doing doing parallel processing of the and sorting of the um, of all the different ore types would be a good idea because that seemed like the logical next step for ore processing so I've got the six ores coming in here by train and then we're feeding them all, all down into crushers floaters um, and that's as far as I got with this and then I got I, so I got these sort of steady stream of the ores coming out but there was always there's always so many problems with this. One would be backed up, or another wouldn't have enough flowing through. I mean, at the moment, as we can see, you've got the, the lead is completely backed up. It's not. I've got obviously got something. Something. This is completely full, so it's, it, it, the lead isn't getting through, and that's blocking up the. Well, there's gold and there's aluminium and there's what I think is probably nickel. Or maybe that's tin, in there as well. So it's, it, it, if one of them backs up, then it affects all of the other ones. So. I spent quite a lot of time trying to get this working nicely and and have it and it was quite nice having all of the metal ores in one place with this with this system here with all the ingots on it and I could pass those along and then if there was something like um, solder which required two of them I could pass them up to it if there was this one what's this this is a uh, cobalt steel I could pass in steel and cobalt and again it could make make them both and it, it worked gloriously but again it, it was a great idea in theory, but there's just no there's no way to sink any excess of these ores that's coming through. Yeah, you can put them into a um, into a warehouse, but eventually that the warehouse fills up and you just have the same problem. But you've just put it off for ten minutes or half an hour or or whatever, depending on the process. So that wasn't working brilliantly. At that point, I decided I realised that there was another way of producing ores, and so I, this this was the one I did over here. And so again, I've got all of the ores being fed in through six different stations. This time I've gone slightly bigger. I've, to be honest, I've not really needed that extra size yet. And it's caused me more headaches in, in trains of different sizes and, and that sort of thing <laughs> than, it's actually, than it's helped in the amount of ore I've been getting through. Um, but what I've got here is they're all feeding out. Each one is feeding out the crushed, the floated and the um, 
crystallized, I think. Pure, pur purified, crystallized, one of those. Each of those for each of the, each of the six ores. So we've got all six of them coming out here. And then with catalysts, you can then take in one or more of these. So for example, this one is, is producing iron. And that only needs to take in two of that takes in two of them, the crushed stereotite and the crushed jeevalite. Mix them with catalyst and you get just iron ore out. And that means that's very, very easy. You can then go through, you can turn it into iron, you can turn it into steel. It's glorious, it's perfect, it works, it's easy. You don't you don't have byproducts and and side issues to worry about. So there's nothing in there to overflow. Yeah, some of them are a bit more complicated. This one is gold, and that takes in three different crystals and the orange catalysts. That's, but then that's manageable. And some of these take in extra things, like we've got chlorine coming in here. So yes, okay, technically we have waste product of hydrogen, but we can burn that off. That one's actually okay. Down here, the aluminium is, again, it, oh, this one's only two. This is two two nuggets, um, chunk, chunks, I think it calls them, and the green uh, catalyst. And so we can feed that through, and then yada, yada, yada. It's, that's absolutely fine. And as we work down, we've got quite a few different materials coming out here. Some of them are a bit more complicated. We've got the titanium coming out here, and then a few of them. And then over here, the next step, each of these metals, a basic metal, will come out and go onto these belts over here, and then and then go to the, um, the stations here to be picked up and taken to where they're needed. But if they're a slightly more complicated one that requires mixing the uh, ingots together, then that can be done in here as well. So we've got cobalt and steel making cobalt steel. We've got nickel and titanium making um, uh, nitinol. Uh, so these all, yeah, these all work quite nicely. They're um, they're, they're quite straightforward and simple and you just pump it up on the belts into the stations and the trains can come and take it away and there's no weird byproducts so it's so much easier I can't honest if I'm being honest I can't remember the recipes well enough to say whether whether it would have been realistic for me to go in and go straight for this um, go st jump straight from the basic crush and burn to this full whole whole catalyst based system I did for quite a long time have problems with um, insufficient crushed stone for the catalysts and insufficient and I was starting to get to the point where I didn't have enough crushed crystal. Crystal dust? Crystal dust. Crystal dust? Um, where is it? Yeah, it is crystal dust. Um, because the crushed stone was being produced at a slower rate than it was being used up by these sort of systems. And any sort of place where you crush stone does tend to produce it, but I wasn't getting enough of it to make the um, to make the make the catalyst out of. However, there's a couple of things that I have discovered since then. One is that you can make it out. You can also make the brown catalyst out of thermal water by pumping it around through filtration systems. It uses quite a lot of thermal water, and thermal water requires titanium, so you'd need to rush titanium in order to get this. And I don't know how feasible that is. And I'm to be honest, I don't really want to play through the whole thing again to find out. <laughs> I don't have another 200 hours to devote to this, I don't think. The crystals are also a problem because those are produced when you float. Yes, when you float the ores, you get out these crystals. And then you can crush them and it turns them into crystal dust, which you can then carry out or carry away by train. And it's nice and, nice and easy to deal with. And it turns into, into the and it allows you to make the green, the green catalysts. Then you combine both of those to make the orange one. I did also discover that there's a trick i did it up here somewhere where is what what was it here we go so ah yes geode washing so you take in heavy mud water which is fairly easy and then the washing plants can spit out lots and lots of a rainbow of crystals and you then feed those through all these different processing machines up here and you get out a steady stream of crushed stone and crystal dust and that would probably be enough to keep me going with the um uh, with with both of the catalysts, because you don't actually require any other any inputs apart from just pump it pump in water um, and make it muddy by ver by the, using the various washing plants and all of these things you can get rid of if you have to. So so with with perfect hindsight, I would be very very tempted to go for go for a massive system of these, producing these two. And use that to make the catalysts, and that might be a very good way of getting started on um, on angel bobs without all the massive he massive headaches. I'm, as I said, though it's it's very very tempting. If I had if I had somebody else who wanted to play it, I'd um, give them that as advice. <laughs> if they wanted to, um, and maybe maybe do it on multiplayer. So if you fancy tr trying an angel bobs multiplayer and you've got an obscene amount of time to devote to it, let me know. It might be interesting to give that a shot. Uh, what else did we do? We had various mines spring up around the place. So we had some little mines up here. These were these are some of my first ones. I managed to expand into this area. 
Um, some more down here as well when this area wasn't covered in building it, building things. And one of the reasons I pushed out... That was loud. I don't know if you heard that, but it sounds like just some massive crash from the building site across the uh, beyond the back garden. Um, back on topic. <laughs> yeah, the reason I originally pushed out this way, and I think I had a wall going across here and round here, was to get to these oil and... No, it was to get to this gas gas area here. So yes, I had a wall across here. Sorry, this was my front line. Um, so I got this got this gas from here, um, and that was for the plastic. We carried on expanding though, and once I d discovered plasma turrets and um, artillery, things became a bit easier, and I was able to make this this massive um, second bus over here. This was originally planned to just be one that was, would make um, electronic circuits. So up the uh, left hand side of here, we've got essentially we've got yellow circuits, we've got red circuits blue circuits and all of the different components that are needed to make that and then we carried on a little bit further we actually put in modules here as well which is a little bit against the sort of the flow of the whole system and then purple circuits up here so that was my my original plan with this I, I built this out in order to get the blue circuits and have it all in one place so there's a massive system of stations down here dropping all the trains where all the trains can drop off and then run up here and then all the process products run up here and at this point I was less confident about expanding outwards and I think I had a um, my front line at this point was went across here um, and so I didn't I didn't want to push the bus further up this way because I didn't know how well I'd be able to push through the biters so at that point I ended up building up other things I wanted like um, engines and landfill and concrete and batteries and things and all that went up on this side of it and in hindsight that was a mistake because if you build up on one side of the bus you can always expand the bus when you have new products you want to put onto it if you don't you end up with this sort of tangle of products trying to get across each other and through and multiple ones trying to occupy the same space and oh it's just a bit of a mess and I oh it was it was a it was a big struggle trying to get some of these trying to get everything onto here especially when you get a new product that you need halfway up the bus and or you need to put or you realize that you've been making um, ferric chloride down here for the blue circuit for the red circuits and then you also need it for the purple circuit so you need to somehow pipe it all the way up here to make the um, make the boards for them make you well whatever it was I needed I, I can't even I can't remember exactly what it was but there have definitely been problems in here with trying to get the right products in the right places why is this stopped this time? We've run out of purple circuits. Lovely. Why have we run out of purple circuits? Because we've run out of um, chips. Why have we run out of chips? Because we've run out of fish. No. Um, potatoes. Where did chip? Where? Did, where do chips come from? Must be down. And also, why is there a yellow, chunk of yellow on this on this bell? Here we go. Chips, 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 chips. Sulf Over and out of sulfuric acid. Lovely. <laughs> As I was saying earlier, we've got a massive glut of sulfuric acid, but it never seems to be in quite the right place, so I'm going to need to look into that. Oh, what was I saying? Um, right, so yeah, we got to the point where we'd had many, many things like that. Um, there were a few extra bits and little bits and pieces we had to slap in place, like making lithium batteries here, low density structures here. Uh, silver zinc batteries here and these are all fairly simple because they're not too difficult as far as the recipes go you just needed to whack in some stations to bring the products in and you see a lot of um, massive bases on on the uh, subreddit where people have gone to the extreme with this sort of thing they've made a grid out of their trains <clears throat> and then each grid square will have one little product being made in it and then you train it off to everywhere it's needed and if you don't have enough of that single product then you make another grid module with that product was making that product in it and yeah that's a nice idea I'm not really organized enough for that unfortunately <laughs> um, and to be honest with angel bobs I feel like there's so many side products and byproducts you'd have a, a nightmare of time getting that to work that's most of the base uh, finally we had this sort of nuclear thing up here but um, if you've been watching any of the remotely recent episodes you'll know all about this this was taking in thermal water filtering it and getting out relatively small quantities of uranium now I have discovered there's another way to make uranium ore that like like all of these methods it, you take in these sort of in, in initial product uh, initial ore ores or processed ores and use a catalyst and you can chuck, chuck loads of it out so I'm gonna start doing that to make more nuclear stuff and then using the the, 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 the bobing about refining process here in order to um, 
make lots and lots of plutonium. And I'll probably just ignore the thorium and probably cut this off because it's using <laughs> ridiculous quantities of thermal water. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, we'll see. Is, have I talked about all the base? So up here we've got a little bit of mining. There's not much going on here. We've got a massive bank of uh, solar panels across here. That's where all my power, most of my power comes from. Although well, there's quite a lot more down here as well. It's just wherever there seemed to be room at the time. Oh, science. I didn't mention science. Across here we've got the... Um, Again, in the same sort of way, you've got a series of uh, railway stations bringing in the bringing in the components and then feeding out the science. So in this case, it's easy. You bring in copper and you bring in iron and you feed out yellow. Bringing in iron, you bring in yellow circuits, you feed out red. Fairly straightforward. And you just carry on. We've got here, we've hopefully got... Is this grey? Yes, grey, where I'm screwed up and didn't put enough stations in. <laughs> um, but we've run out of crushed stones, uh, uh, just for a change. So that's caused this to, back, to come to a halt. And then blue and, and and pink and so on. So, wow, there's a lot. Of, and then we get some of the more complicated sciences. Like, is this one pink or purple? I, yeah, that looks like pink. So you've got a bajillion different inputs for this. And there's and then actually not all that much processing, to be honest. Oh, it's I remember why. It's because, yes, you have to go through all of the steps of belts here in order to get up to blue belts. And was there something similar? Yeah, and, and say, same with the inserters here. So there's lots of different inputs going in. And there's a gunged up belt here as well, which I should go in and fix. Um, so you've got loads of different inputs going in, in order to get not too many outputs. Which is a bit of a... What are these? What are these? Oh, maybe these are rope... These, the graphics have changed, which is very confusing. Um, I think those must be um, flying robot frames or something. They look like fans anyway, so I'm going to assume that's what probably what they are. So we had all the science being built along here, up to, all the way up to green. Uh, which has also ground to a halt. Oh dear, my entire factory's falling, been falling apart while I wasn't looking. Um, and then that was brought over to here by train, and we've got massive quantities of science happening here. So I can produce, I can choose some more more science to run. We've probably got white science now. Uh, I can't do that though. Why can I not do that? Oh, as a yeah, right. Let's do that one. <laughs> so now, as you can see, all of the all the um, science labs flare up, and everything runs nicely. Except there's a load of um, alien artifacts on here, so we can't get the white science all the way through. But you know, as I say, everything needs everything needs some fixing. Apparently, I'm running out of yellow science as well, and I'm not. Um, and then we've got module science here, so we've got trains dropping off the three types of modules of socket circuit board, and there's two types of module other board. They're being fed down here to these machines. That's easy and that's simple enough. Uh, it's just a mine. Over here, we're turning. This is where we started doing some of the more organic stuff. So we've got some farming going on here that's produced, and we're using that to feed the fish, and also to feed the farty puffers, and that's producing one of the more weird products we need. Uh, which one is it? That was the oh yeah, the uh, hydrogen fluoride. That was that was a bit of a mission to make, but it's working now. That's nice. And also to make these crystals that are being turned into. Um, that we use to turn into modules. So this sort of thing, this thing is, this this bit here with the fish is in order to allow me to make modules. This bit over here with the puffers is to allow me to make the um, hydrogen fluoride, which I think was one of the ingredients for one of the, one of the more advanced metals. Uh, tungsten, tungsten, that's the one. So that was, yeah, that was that was getting a little bit complicated by that point. Um, but no, it was, it was, it was manageable. I've also expanded out into all this area as well. I wanted the extra thermal water areas, but when I was using so much of it for the nuclear, but um, that's less of an issue now. I've turned that, I've, I've mostly turned that one down a bit. And I think that's about it. What's going on here? Oh, and then we had the rocket stuff as well. Yes. So we had all of these machines down here making rocket fuel. Um, they seem to have backed up a bit. I think that's because both the rockets are finished, but I don't have enough plutonium coming through to make satellites yet. Or enough radars either for that matter. So so the next job is going to be getting a, trains lo a train load of plutonium and radars down here so we can start really launching the rockets at a, at a decent rate. And then maybe put in some more rocket assembly buildings. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. The, um, the world is the mollusk of my choice now. It's just a case of deciding what to do. And I've been sort of working towards... I've got to some of the space expansion um, science, uh, things now, like this one. And then I realise it takes 60,000 of each of these science juices to do. So I'm, 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 I'm kind of putting that one on hold for now. Let's pick up some of the easier stuff, like uh, Productivity 3 I can probably do. Uh, I don't want to do, I can't do these ones because I haven't got the green and the dirty green and dirty brown um, modules being made yet. But I don't really care about that. Let's pick up some of these. 
as well just pick off the easy, the early researches i think um these are going to absolutely fly through one of the nice things I've, I've discovered is you can now queue up a few more researches. I don't know when I got that. I don't know whether it's a mod or a um, an up, update in the, in Factorio or I don't, I don't know. But it's it's rather nice because as you can see, it doesn't take all that long to do a um, a research job. So having them fly through and then another one be ready to go immediately is rather nice. Right, I think I've waffled about my base for long enough. However, if you do have any questions, if there's any bits you want me to talk about in a bit more detail, because that was a very quick tour of the, of the whole place, please do let me know. Um, it's always nice to have feedback and uh, and have something else to make a video about. In the meantime, I'm going to carry on with, uh, with with doing research and trying to fix all those little things I noticed as I wandered around the base. <laughs> Look how fast that one's going. Brilliant. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll come back for a later episode when hopefully I'll have something a bit more to say. We'll see how that goes. And I'll see you then. Okay.